Everything about data engineering jobs in Canada. We will discuss in this video. Hi Dilip Vijay, first of all, thanks a lot for joining the call today. Hi Sai, nice, nice connecting with you as well. How are you? I'm good, Dilip Vijay. So before we start our conversation, can you please briefly introduce yourself to the audience? I completed my master's from a Canadian institute, uh, same as University of Montreal. Its business school is HEC Montreal. That's where I completed my master's in analytics from. And right now I'm working as a data engineer for a corporate in uh, Toronto. So that's pretty much about my background and my job. And Digvijay, you graduated from one of the top Canadian universities. So I want your opinion on choosing a college versus choosing a university if you want to be a data engineer. So I want to know specifically. how graduating from the top university helped you to get a good job maybe it wasn't that much helpful so can you please tell us the role of educational institute while getting a job as a data engineer i i see this this question being really important among students when they begin out but it's not really that relevant of a question right now uh, in the job market but i'll try to address this address it with some key points so i have three key points that should, you should you should think about when you think about choosing a college versus a masters you know one is the alumni second is the competitiveness and the third is mentorship so when you think about alumni right when you go to a certain place where people work at a uh, good corporates you know or or you know they are already successful you know you have that network in order to you know uh, use it to you know your advantage but when it comes to you know colleges you the, the network that you might have you know that you could take to the advantage is less and the reputation is a factor but it won't be like india where you know if you go to a very good university a good placement is something that is guaranteed okay it's not like that i think that's a wrong notion i've seen people from going from colleges as well and making great uh, you know advances in their career and that's because of the single factor that they have such a good network of people on linkedin that which helps them to you know first get a job referral second they are around competitive people so they are always more motivated to do things and the third most important thing that i always tell people you know when they come to canada is that try to find a mentor okay i think that will solve 90% of your problem if you try to figure out something on your own you know using trial and error it will work in the long run but you know if you, if you can get a mentor not just in the field of data engineering even if some, if it's related to computer science or any other field you know it will help you understand what is important so this question is not really about the education factor you know this question is more about the people that you get connected to when you join a specific institute that was a great answer dik vijay and dik vijay if we talk specifically about the canadian industry so how is this for the data engineers are there enough jobs if you think about job opportunities for data engineering right now it's actually uh, you know booming right now in canada if you think about 2 years ago even this title did not exist at some corporations or or even you know thinking about hiring a data engineer was not something that people were interested in but nowadays you know the the job roles you know are defined in such a manner that you know they 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 actually uh, explain that why you know data engineers are so important for them okay if you read the description of a data engineer it's so it's so different for corporation to corporation that you know you can't say that this is just a data engineer job because you know every cor- every corporation is trying to hire data engineer with some different context so in if the, if you mean in that context yes but if you think about generic data engineer jobs it's not as much as you know you would expect as in terms of the us market uh another you know concept that uh, you know comes into the play is that you know if you think about big cities like toronto or vancouver they actually have more opportunities for data engineering uh because they have more you know uh service based firms as well because service based firms actually have more roles or let's say they can hire more people for the single role you know let's say data engineer they hire five to six people for that but if you think about just corporations in general you know they'll just hire one person you know for the role so in that way the if you want to you know get hired quickly toronto or vancouver should be in your mindset and in terms of the salary you know you should not settle for less for this job title it's it's such a you know interesting title that comes companies are looking for right now you know it's such a dynamic job that you know no certain individual with a limited skill set can do it so if you actually get the opportunity to work it don't settle for less is, is my second answer in this and the guru you made it very clear that toronto and vancouver are the hub for the data engineering jobs but if if i talk about the people who don't have the industry experience or the freshers is, is the industry open to them or these types of roles are for more experienced people uh, the honest answer to this is course people are right now only hiring i would say 70% to 80% of jobs are only for you know the experienced folks right now but if you want to capture even some of the intermediate jobs or even the fresher jobs you know you need to understand that what is it what is it that is important you know that will help you land the job rather than thinking about the experience factor so first think about volunteering while you are if you have the chance right and you're still 
Bible study. Just go out, try to find volunteer jobs. Just try to work on projects that some open source company or some startup company is working on. Help them out at, at zero cost, okay, if you have the time to do it. And then the second thing that is more important is that, you know, try to focus on project-based learning, okay? Because that's how you develop context about things. When you do project-based learning, you, do, you don't only have skills, okay? You have the idea of an experience of the entire project life cycle. That, that, is, that is what basically they want, right? Your understanding of tools and skills with context. And that's that's how you sell yourself, you know, as a freshman. And the third thing that that will actually boost up your chance of getting an interview uh, is pursuing certifications in, in 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 the field, right? So it can be any vendor. It doesn't matter that you have to pursue, you know, this or that. But just try to sell yourself, you know, using as many things as possible. So I mentioned three things here. You know, try to volunteer, do project-based learnings with context. Okay, don't try to copy projects. Disclaimer: Try to do your own projects. And the third thing is, of course, follow certifications. And Digvijay, you also told us that uh, the skills, it depends upon the company to company. But if we talk in general, so what can be the skill set that a student or a fresh grad for the Canadian industry, they can focus on? So what are those general skills that a data engineer must have? That's a good question, actually, you know, because uh, there, there are so many dynamic, you know, roles that how do you actually tackle them, you know, because you can't learn everything right now. So the best bet right now you can put on is, you know, trying to focus on jobs that, that are inclusive, try to focus on skills, basically, that are inclusive in, you know, 72 80% of the job groups, okay? So start with computer science fundamentals. I see people, you know, talking about this big projects, machine learning based, you know, real-time data pipeline, all that, but try to think why that is required now, okay? You already have databases, you already have operating systems, you already have computer networks. If all of this is already in place, why do we actually need big data, right? This type of fundamental understanding of computer science will actually help you, uh, you know, understand your own projects well as well, but even, you know, excel more at your job. So try to focus on the CS fundamentals, OS, database management systems and networking. And then besides that, if you had to pick a language, right, that you want to learn, right? Python is the go-to right now, of course. But if you had to just add one more to the skill, you know, you could think about Java because of, of Scala, you know, that could be used uh, for a data engineer, but you can, you can focus on Python if you are not, you know, very confident with Java. Uh, there's one more thing that I tell everybody, you know, I used to teach at a bootcamp as well, you know, I tell, I used to tell them that don't just limit yourself projects or ideas that come to your mind or come from your friend's mind or, you know, you search for the internet. Try to think about, uh, try to look at you know, places like GitHub, okay? They have so much resources, you know, that you'll actually be, you know, overwhelmed with, you know, so many projects, okay? So just try to follow those projects itself, you know, to understand what is an important skill to, you know, learn in terms of a data engineering life cycle. Uh, besides that, you know, I all I think that, you know, context, as I said, again, is more important, right? If you say that you have the ability to build a data pipeline, okay, that is good. But what do you actually mean by that, right? What are your data sources? If you do transformation what are the types of data transformations you do if you do analytics what is the analytics is it machine learning or is it power bi so this is the context that i talk about right don't learn just tools learn it with context so if you think about this type of you know skill management you know program you know that you keep yourself attached with it will actually help you you know gather most of your the skills that are required and you have also mentioned about the certifications and how they can add up to your skill set but are there any particular certifications that you would suggest the data engineering aspirants to pursue? Uh, in terms of the vendors that I, I think are more prevalent right now are, you know, Azure and AWS, especially in Canada. The Canadian market is Azure. So uh, certificates like Azure Data Engineer or AWS Data Analytics, they can actually boost your profile, you know, to, you know, help you get the interview. But but the core understanding is still that, you know, you need to understand the cloud platform first in, with a general context that what is cloud, right? And then think about doing such advanced certificates certifications there are some other uh, you know uh, certifications as well but i have not pursued much of them so it wouldn't be right for me to comment upon it but i personally believe that azure data engineer and aws data analytics are good to start with and digvijay till now we have discussed about the skills about the projects about the certifications so if we want to put up the information in in an order for the audience so what should be the roadmap for the data engineering experience what's the first thing that they, they should do and how they should proceed further in their career so if you think about you know dividing this entire process into into your into your study cycle okay the first is learning second is you know applying and the third is the interview right that's 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 the beginning part okay uh, now when you think about learning okay i will say focus on four things here in the learning cycle master one language which could be python cause over python and if you are learning python try to focus on PySpark if you can because that's something that's really important in us in interviews nowadays and sql don't don't just think about sql as just simple joins and you know simple select statements okay think about sql as advanced things like windowing functions that you know things like you know self joins or something
something uh, that you do on an SQL server that is triggering, uh, you know, uh, SQL statements. Okay, so think about all of those advances. Then focus on cloud. Okay, when you're learning, don't focus on all of the cloud. Just think about one cloud, cloud ad vendor, and and master all of the things that are related to big data in that cloud vendor. Okay, and then think about the big data pipelines. Okay, but what do I mean by big data pipelines? I mean, you know, uh, the tools that are there. You know, basically related to Hadoop, Spark, and all of that. Learn all of those ecosystems and how they are combined to make a data pipe. So there's four things I mentioned right now were related to the learning. Now, if you think about the applying phase, uh, I believe that the applying phase is more about the resume rather than your knowledge. Okay, because the front person does not know how much you know. They only know as much as they see on that paper. So try to build a perfect resume as much as you can. I know you don't have experience when you begin out. Okay, but try to list as many third-party experience as you can uh, in context of the job that you're applying to on your profile and try to pick keywords. Okay, go through 20, 30 job jobs on LinkedIn. Okay, try to find common keywords and make sure those are present in your resume. Then when you're explaining your uh, experience, don't just explain them bluntly in one or two lines. Okay, be detailed about them. Give them context. Okay, give them metrics. How did you improve it? You can give an example like I improved the data pipeline by implementing it in Azure Data Factory with an efficiency of, you know, 20%, 15%. Try to give it a number, you know, a hypothetical one, but you know, something that would make sense in your mind and of course, interview mind. And then think about, you know, uh, just listing down one or two university projects, not more than that. Don't think about university projects more than that, just one or two. And it's not necessarily that your project, I mean, your resume should be just like, uh, you know, a, a one pager. You can be uh, having the resume size two or three pages. In all of these things, you know, don't try to model your resume as a very general resume, okay? Try to make it pinpointed as it's a data engineer resume. When someone looks at your resume for even 10 seconds, you know, they should know that, okay, this is either a big data consultant or is it's a big, it's a data engineer, okay? So that's how you should be. So that's why when you mention all of this, when you mention all the keywords, you should list it as five to six points in the initial part of your resume. And then comes the experience and then comes your education and then comes, you know, the university project. That's how you should align it. That's how I, I have done it. And I've applied to many jobs and I have done this trial and error to reach to this conclusion that this works. Not, not that it will work for everyone, but it works for me. And now coming to the third part, that is the interview process. Uh, it, it can be a lot of things. It can be, you know, just coding tests. It can be a SQL test or it can be just technical discussions in general. And we have to prepare sort of for most of it. You can't, of course, prepare for the, you know, the magic interview that where they expect to be you to be the perfect candidate. That's never going to be, that's never going to happen. So first try to, you know, be a master of Python. Okay. Just do some lead core questions, not, you know, like, you know, tons of hard questions. Just try to do some easy and medium questions and just learn, you know, to have a grip of it. And then try to learn PySpark for data manipulation because I've had some interviews, you know, in which they tell you to, you know, to data manipulation on the data frames and PySpark in front of them. Okay. So they'll share their screen and they'll give you the control of their screen and basically be coding in front of them. Okay. And then there can be also SQL based questions. So as I said, again, SQL, not just simple joins and stuff. Okay. You have to think about advanced, uh, you know, uh, things in SQL beyond that. Okay. So try to, you know, find as many SQL advanced tutorials as you can, because that will really help first. And then in terms of the, uh, the technical discussion, right, this is the funny part, you know, where it can go anywhere. Okay. And it depends on what the interviewer's mindset is. Okay. So I, what I've experienced is that, you know, some people will try to focus only on projects that you've done. Some people will either try to focus only on their problem, right? That what is actually their problem. And then some people will try to focus on a general discussion, you know, where they will try to judge that, okay, if I tell you uh, to pick a data pipeline using a specific technology for a given scenario what what do you pick okay what are the technology stacks do you pick and what are what is your reasoning to do that okay so they'll assess you on the basis of that in those types of technical discussion uh and the behavioral rounds are you know just something that you have to learn from general websites you know related to if they are client facing roles you know how do you actually face your clients and how do you actually interact with them and some in general behavioral questions that you can search on the internet not not really something that you need to worry about so if you learn all of this you know and continue to you know try to master all of these sections as i mentioned learning applying interview process these are three sections you know it's not like you've done one and the other it's done okay let's say you, you finish the learning part it doesn't mean that you'll stop learning okay you'll have to go back to that learning process to you know fetch that interview again and you know you know ace it again right so just focus on these three cycles again and again try to make a note of every single time you fail an interview try to ask people in email right what went wrong okay and just try to focus on that and probably that will help you with the of probability right try to apply in 50 jobs get interviews for 10 and land a job in one that's all you care about right you just need one job so try to follow this process and i hope you get what you want that was a great explanation Digvijay.
And Digwaj, before we end our conversation, one final question for you. So you told us not to settle for less while you are applying for the data engineering roles, right? So if I, if you have to quote figure, so what would be that figure for which we should satisfy? <laughs> so if if you if let's say you are not in a city like uh, Calgary or you know or a city like uh, so a small city, right? Basically, which is not very okay. which does not have a huge cost of living, uh, which is basically Toronto and Vancouver, which have high cost of living. You should not go for anything less than eighty five thousand to ninety thousand because that's something that will probably need because you'll pay taxes and at the end there'll be so much of rent and you know all of those things that will come into the picture that you know it's going to be hard you know for you know you to settle down in that city with less amount of money because you will have to stay close to the to the city you know and not just in the suburb so that's one reason for not asking less if you think about freshers okay i understand that if you really don't have any experience you sort of have to be okay with 60000 or 70000 as well but even if you have one or you know two years of experience no matter you know is it's in canada or it's back home in india it should be at least 90000 dollars you know to begin with recruiters will tell you okay that this is the average figure you know, okay but recruiters don't know what's going on with the rest of the market okay they'll just tell a general figure that's available on glassdoor and try to pump you into it if you're really looking forward to a job of okay just try to low ball your game and begin with 80000 to 85000 and once you know you to grow up you will probably you know cross 120 and 130 as well i've seen i've seen offers coming to me for contracting you know where it's been 80 dollars per hour or 75 dollars per hour as well you know for a uh, contract so it's not something that's uh, that you should you know settle for less uh, so yeah that's that's pretty much it 80 to 90 thousand is something you can begin with optimistically i think these figures are motivating enough if data engineering itself is not that motivating for some of the students thanks a lot digvijay for this wonderful conversation and i have learned a lot I guess that's it for our today's talk. I again thank you for joining the call today. So guys, this was the today's video about data engineering jobs in Canada. I hope you have really liked the video and learned a lot. Please make sure to subscribe the channel. And in case this video wasn't enough to make you subscribe to this channel, for my upcoming videos, I'm going to Toronto and Montreal, where I will be interacting with different software developers to bring out what's going on in those cities and how's those cities for the software developers. Please stay tuned for those videos. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.